Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about attributes. I'll tell you guys what they are, how to create them, how to use them, and then also be talking about attribute tables. So let's get started. First of all, what are attributes? Attributes are technically pages. They look different from page refs and tags, but they pretty much have the same function. They are both links that link to pages. So, how do you create attributes? The first way is to type the page you want to create and then add two colons at the end of it. The second way is mostly used to search attributes. You type two colons and note how the cursor jumps in front when you do that. And then you just look for the page you want to insert in your block. Of course, you can also use this technique to create a page. The double colon at the end kind of works like the double square brackets or the hashtag. Now, we, they work exactly the same as page refs and tags, but what are the differences? First, let's talk about the appearance. As you can see here, the attribute, page ref, and hashtag all look different, but if I were to click on any of them, they will all lead me to the same page. But note how when you place the double colon, it makes all the text in the block before it into a page. So if I were to write a random sentence in an empty block and then add two colons at the end of it, it will turn that sentence into a block. Also, it's important to know that you can't create attributes with other attributes or pages or hashtags in it. It would only work with plain text. Unlike the square brackets that can wrap any part of the block into a page or the tag that creates a page out of the word it's placed in front of. So, tags are placed before, colons, double colons after, and square brackets before and after. Attributes will also turn out with the colon after the page name, so this doesn't affect the name of the page. If I were to click on the link I created with the attribute, you can see that the title of the page does not include the colon. Second difference. It's the use cases that make attributes different from page refs and tags. Now, what do people use these for? People use them to record metadata. What is metadata? Metadata is data about data. Another way to think about metadata is as properties shared by all the objects in your collection. So, for example, for all of my readings, I have the following metadata. I'm reading and taking notes on this reading and you can see that the, these links here are attributes. In fact, all of my readings have these attributes. Since they act just like pages, when I click on the link, I have every time I reference this page or attribute. So, if I want to record who wrote them, I use the attribute author. I'll talk more about my organization of reading and other kinds of notes in another video. And you can see that if I click on the link, I'll see all my reading notes since they are all linked to author. So, third, third difference. A bonus advantage to attributes is that you can create attribute tables. Today I'll show you how to create one at block level. First, let's create the first of two sections and let's name that one Silk. I'll make a table about a different circus specialties and their properties. So the silk section will be the row, the first row of our table. Underneath it, I'm going to add another section where we are going to create our table. Now, under silk, I'm going to add some attributes. I'm going to name different properties of this circus specialty. The first one will be category, the second will be coach, and the third will be fundamentals. Okay. Now that I'm done adding the attributes, I'll create the table so it will be easier for you guys to understand exactly how this works. So to create it, you have to type two curly brackets, ATTR dash table, and then a colon. And then you must pick a common attribute. Here, in this case, I will pick coach. Now, since we are going to have two sections in our table, we must pick an attribute that is also going to be in the second section as well as in the first. If not, the second section will not be connected to our table. I'll explain exactly what this means when we'll add the second section to our table. If you look at the table we just created, you can see that there isn't anything in the table yet because there isn't any data related to the attributes yet. So I'll add that now and in the meantime look at how the table fills up. So for category I'll put aerial. Aerials are just apparatuses or specialties or disciplines that are hanged to the ceiling instead of having direct contact with the floor. 
For coach, I'll put the name of my circus coach, of my silk coach. And then for fundamentals, I'll add an element that I use a lot uh, for my personal elements. Hmm. Um, I think I'm going to go with helicopter. All right. This is actually a pretty simple rap, but it needs a lot of core strength. Here's a video of me doing it. Anyway, as you can see, the information I put in got added to the table. So what this table does is that it takes data related to the attributes, puts it in a table, and organizes it. But it only takes into account the attributes that are under the same bullet or page. Rome is able to identify what attributes are connected to the common attribute, and then it is also able to see under what bullet they are all um, nested underneath. So, for example, if I were to nest the attributes under the bullet attribute tables, then the row in our table will be called attribute tables instead of silk, because these attributes are under that main block. However, you can see that there is no column called silk because it is not an attribute. Okay, now I will create a second section, contortion. And now I will fill in the information. So contortion goes in the acrobatic section since you only use your own body and the ground for this. Now I'll put in my flexibility coach and then the most fundamental element you need to be able to do as a contortionist, which is the teardrop. This figure actually looks like an upside down teardrop and it is basically just a bridge where you grab your ankles. As you can see, this information was also added in the table, and that is because the common attribute we chose earlier is also included in the second section, and the common attribute was coach. So if it wasn't in the second section, appear, then all this information would not appear in the table. So let's say I were to remove the coach attribute from the contortion section. You can see that the whole row will disappear even though the rest of the attributes are the same. That doesn't matter if the common attribute isn't there. Also, if I add another attribute to any section, it will still appear in the table as another column. So let's do that. I'll add color to the silk section, and my silk is turquoise. When I added this information, another column got added in the table. But since you can't have really have a color when you're doing contortion or other specialties, this really isn't a good attribute that I'll use if I want to have a clean attribute table. This doesn't apply only for this particular case. You can also have properties that don't apply for certain things and I choose to avoid those to keep my database cleaner. Of course, you can use these if it's essential, but I prefer to use the same attributes for these larger categories. Anyways, that was it for my video today guys. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe. See you soon!